artistic visions. My name is Dookie Sims. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, Bensonhurst. It was cool growing up. I mean, there was a lot of racism. In August of 1989, 16-year-old Yusef Hawkins and three friends took the subway to Bensonhurst. Let me say this to all of the good people of Bensonhurst. The mob. Asshole number one, shake hands with asshole number two. In Bensonhurst, good friends are brothers forever. I'm Alien Lex, my bro DA. You know, I've known him for a long time, since I was this big. As he would say, growing up in Brooklyn was interesting. Brooklyn is an interesting place with a lot of different people. I was very partial towards music. And baseball. Terminator Dave's son. I grew up in Rockland County, which is 20 miles north of New York City. I have a twin brother. My name is Maniac Mike. Growing up was a really good time. Running around a river town, we got to ski, going to school, have a lot of friends. It was a really good time. Hey, my name is Baby G. I grew up in Lawrence, Massachusetts. My mom's single mom and my dad wasn't around. My older brother, younger sister, and my mom was my mom and my dad. She was everything. Growing up wasn't the easiest thing. I definitely know we could have had it a lot harder, but it wasn't the best. This is your boy DJ Access Powers. I'm originally born in Toronto, Canada, and I grew up in New Jersey. When I was a kid in Canada, I was good at baseball, but I wasn't that good at hockey. But as soon as I came here, I was like Wayne Gretzky, and I sucked at baseball. Kids were throwing curves, and the heat was definitely a bit of a culture shock. In the third grade, I started playing the saxophone. I played the saxophone all the way until ninth grade. And once I dropped out of high school, I stopped playing the saxophone, and I just switched to guitar. I've been rocking the guitar ever since. Well, I saw my cousin and play his bar mitzvah when I was almost 13 and he killed it and he played guitar and I thought he was totally the man. That was the day that I decided that I would start to learn how to play guitar. When I was 16, my mom wanted me to start rounding myself better to apply to college and she was like, your brother plays music, you should play music with him. And that day we went to Sam Ash on 48th Street and bought a Pearl Forum Series drum set wrapped in deep blue plastic and it was awesome. I got into music because my pops is a bass player Big shout outs to Marty McFly, AKA Back to the Future. My mom told me that since I was four years old, I used to go around with this little cabbage patch radio singing Lisa Lisa. I wonder if I take you home. Party just came out the room, loving music. I had some friends who were DJs. They lent me their records. I ended up just really developing a passion for DJing, getting into turntablism and scratching. We all met at a recording studio, rehearsal studio. Studio forever. I was a recording engineer there. Your baby G he was taking vocal class and I used to set up the rehearsals and set up the vocal class. We were all sharing sessions and being in bands together and playing shows. Play on Bleecker Street, Kenny's Castaways, 169 Bar, and all these places kind of where we started. Me and Mike and Axis were playing in a band called Stallion Wax Machine. <laughs> And then when that broke up, I just came in, I was like, I'll be the new guy, we'll take this ship and we'll just ride this ship. Did a couple tunes, one of them being Brooklyn to Babylon. I remember hearing Brooklyn to Babylon for the first time and just being like, wow, this stuff is really good. I was really impressed, so I'm on board. They asked me, would you like to be in the band? And I said yes. I was a fan and I used to come to a lot of the shows and uh, one day I was asked to play bass in some shows. Suddenly it became a permanent thing, and I was no longer a fan. I was the bass player in Shinobi Ninja. Rock Hood started as the Brooklyn to Babylon demos. We were just making recordings as we could write the songs. We demo them in our studio in the Upper East Side in the apartment, and then after that we tracked them inside my mom's house. Like all the demos, music that we had made, and it was really cool and fun, but like how to be a band, how to make it happen live. I think DA said one time, it was like, you know, the light was shining, and we just kept shining the light till it was finished. You know, Rock Hood was there. It's definitely one of our biggest songs, and I think it's, for us, represents a kind of emerging of styles. The next album we recorded was Escape from New York, Return From, which is a 21 song double album. Used all the things that we learned doing Rock Hood. We applied them to Escape from New York and Return From. Made it more metal, what the band sounded like live. We did all the recording at the sound machine in New York City. Whereas before, we didn't have a studio. So I guess round two, a little bit more stringent with details, fidelity, and everything a little bit more dimensional. It's version 2.0 of the band from October 2011 through 2012. And it was really wild. It took a long time. We had just finished mixing and mastering Escape from New York and Return From. I was a little exhausted on it. After we did a whole year of double album with all the details and everything, I really felt that the next move for us in contrast was to go into the studio, mic everything up, come in every day, and freestyle some type of instrumental 
instrumental music every day for five days. Then the next week we'll come in and we'll freestyle the vocals for those tracks that we just did. We had four hours a day to make a song uh, from nothing. It's just probably about the freshest thing that could be done at the moment. Fresh. It was all jammed out. They just kind of vibing off of each other. It's just different. It's different in the way that it came about. Jesus on the keys. DA is playing guitar. You know, Mikey's on guitar. Alex on bass. Different percussion elements in our hands. So it's very organic. The album came out very interesting because that a lot of ideas got taken to different places. It just became like a fun jam session. We all wrote together in a room together, and we let it really be whatever it was going to be. We had an engineer, Tex. He was awesome in his help in the recording process because he just helped down for us in the control them while we're in here and we're just able to play. All the art was done by Juice Man. It's me, Juice Man! I first heard of Shinobi Ninja in 2011. Who's that band that's playing at this grade school while I'm painting murals? I, mean, I really wanted to do something visually different than what we'd already done in Juice Man. Those making our shoes and our hats. We started working on the artwork in like 2012. Duke Sims, he was like, hey, you want to do some artwork? We recorded it in December of 2012. You know, people were kind of didn't pay attention to it, but once it got brought up on the tracks and it started to get mixed, man, people was just gravitating towards it. Visionary record, man. You think about all the other stuff that we've done before. Does not compare. This is the band, hanging out, having a good time. People have never seen anything like this. There's a lot of things that are like other things, but there's only one Shinobi Ninja. This is something that we built from nothing. We're an independent rock band doing what the fuck we want. For nobody to be able to tell us no and for us to live that dream has been the ultimate privilege. All of this was done out of love. That's really what our band is about, being yourself. I probably look crazy right now. I don't know why I'm sitting like this or what's the deal, but it is what it is. Peace to the chicken grease. Thank you for listening to our artistic visions. Everything around me is my artistic visions. So, to me, that, that name does really speak to me. D.A. Duke Sims, Baby G, Alien Lex, DJ Access Powers, uh, Terminator Dave, Maniac Mike. Did I get them all? Yeah, I think that was all of them.